What's going on guys? Okay, that's the wrong tip. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video and today we're going to be reacting to another history video because I just enjoyed it so much. I know I didn't get a lot of views but I like posting what I enjoy. So now we're reacting to this one by the History Channel. Grueling fight for control of Guma Kanawa. Biggest battles of World War II. So let's go. Outnumbered American fighter pilots battle marauding Japanese airmen to control the skies over a sweltering Pacific island called Guadalcanal. During a grueling six-month slugfest, their combat in the sky will help decide the course of the Pacific War. August 7, 1942, America launches its first amphibious assault of World War II. Over 11,000 U.S. Marines storm ashore at Guadalcanal. Jeez. The Marines quickly gain a foothold on the island. By the second day, they take the Japanese airstrip, renaming it Henderson Field. The Japanese bring in thousands of fresh troops to Guadalcanal and attack the Americans relentlessly, trying to drive them off the island. What's so big about this island? The Marines fight off attacks while desperately trying to prepare Henderson Field for operations. Japanese tractors and equipment are commandeered to improve the small crushed coral runway. Bomb damage is repaired, and PSP, perforated steel planking, is hurriedly laid down. After two weeks, they finish the airstrip and fly in 19 F-4F Wildcat fighters. Join large-scale battles with military vehicles. Another the ad, bro. Action game At least War it Thunder fits the video. And 12 SBD Dauntless dive bombers. It is only because of the ability of the Americans to place aircraft on Henderson Field to protect the supply ships bringing in reinforcements and supplies to the Marines on Guadalcanal that the island Jeez, it's help. muddy. Because the Allied code name for Guadalcanal is Cactus, Henderson Field becomes the home of the tiny Cactus Air Force, at first consisting of just 43 pilots and ground crew. The men of Henderson Field soon discover it isn't just the enemy making their lives hell. The island was a fly-infested, dirty, stinking, blood-soaked, damned island that uh, it was just dangerous to even walk on the beaches because there was so much unexploded ammunition around. The pilots and ground crew live in mud-floored tents. The latrine is a trench with a log seat, and the bathtub is the Lunga River, complete with crocodiles and leeches. Eww. The flyers of the Cactus Air Force are outnumbered and short on supplies. Fighter, the F-4F Wildcat, can't match the agility of the enemy Zero. But a big advantage for the Cactus Air Force is that they are commanded by a born leader in 27-year-old John Smith. Smith's an aggressive dogfighter and skilled tactician. He always preached and devised his tactics around you have to pit your strengths against the enemy's weakness. And that is as true today as it ever was since the first airplane ever flew in combat. Now, on August 30th, 1942, Captain John Smith and his men are protecting Guadalcanal from approaching bombers and fighters. In his eight days on the island, Smith has already scored five kills, making him a ace. Today, he's racked up one more. He's an ace? That's... I wonder how hard being an ace would, how hard it is to achieve being an ace. And I'm assuming he didn't fly all eight days too. So that should have been like the days where, like, they didn't get attacked all eight days. So that's probably just in the days that he was able to actually fight. Then he spots another zero below, breaking from a cloud. The zero is here. Smith is here, high above him. He plans to use the Wildcat's diving speed to try and drop behind the Japanese plane. Smith first rolls inverted, then dives. This creates positive G-force instead of negative Gs. Roll on your back, or aft on the stick. It'd be like a whole roller coaster. You'd be like, like that'd be crazy hard. 
faster. The maneuver works. Smith rolls back. No, no, no. They're like behind the zero. They like. The Wildcat's six fifty caliber guns delivered two hundred oh, rounds man. in a four second burst. Two hundred rounds in four seconds. How fast? Be like, I'd be like, and be like, like that's it, like, and that's two hundred rounds. How much ammo can they hold? Like they have to be able to hold so much ammo if they're just letting it go like that fast. And all those maneuvers they be doing, like that's gotta be scary. Like how do you get used to that? White hot, phosphorus filled incendiary bullets ignite the Zero's fuel tank. Kablam! But as Smith arcs away from his second victim, the predator becomes the prey. A Japanese Zero closes in on Smith from dead ahead. High above the green jungle canopy of Guadalcanal, the planes converge at over 600 miles per hour. That's pretty fast. Think of a high speed game of chicken directly at your, your target uh, and no one wants to flinch because if you flinch you become defensive and you have to be pointing at the target to shoot him so it has to be head to head once in range the zero opens up with his 20 millimeter cannon smith answers with his 50 caliber machine guns it's basically that slug fest all the way to the merge who's going to flinch first or who's going to blow up first both planes are taking hits, but Smith's Wildcat has thicker armor, and he's withstanding the blows. And then, the overwhelming firepower of the Navy airplane cut this guy into ribbons, he exploded. And then, what Smith did is dump the nose over very hard, very abruptly, and flew underneath the debris field and escaped. The Zero Jeez. has made a fatal error. He fought the Wildcats fight. Captain! The Wildcat is first flown in 1937. The rugged plane features cockpit armor and self-sealing fuel tanks. These tanks are coated with layers of rubber that expand and reseal if they're punctured. The Wildcat faces the most famous of all Japanese aircraft, the deadly Mitsubishi A6M30. The lightweight Zero can outturn and outclimb the Wildcat, a lethal advantage in a dogfight. But its thin armor protection and lack of self-sealing fuel tanks means it can't survive a slugging match with the tougher Wildcat. Yeah, it's just more agility, but it's like, it's like, what do you take? Speed and agility, or better guns, better armor, better, like, self-sealing fuel tanks, so you're just, like, harder to take down, but you have, uh, lower range, uh, and, f um, way less, like, maneuverable and speed. So it's like, what do you want to take? I would personally just take the safest option, but, I don't know. Fighter versus fighter combat. The difference between the Wildcat and the Zero is the difference between a battle axe and a rapier. They can both be effective, but they're used uh, somewhat differently. The Zero is faster, more maneuverable, and can outclimb the Wildcat, while the Grumman is tougher, more heavily armed, and can outdive the Zero. Oh, it still has dive speed. That's good. Wildcat pilots, in general, would want to avoid Returning fight with the Zero, that would not be their fight. The Wildcat with its 650 cal machine guns, heavy body armor, heavy armor around the engine cowling, preferred head on attacks, funnel attacks, and it would just basically plow through that Zero. Yep, then it's weak. So what happens if multiple Zeros keep coming at it? August 30th is a resounding victory for Smith and his pilots. They shoot down 14 of the 22 attacking Zeros. The Japanese bombers the Zeros were protecting retreat before reaching Guadalcanal.
Well, that was a banger video. And, uh, yeah, thank you for the History Channel for this epic video. And, uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.